Hello, hockey fans, and welcome back to another episode of Buyer's Remorse, the series where we look back at some of the biggest trades, signings, or other acquisitions in league history, but teams didn't quite get what they paid for. In today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at one of the most lopsided trade deadline deals the league has ever seen, as we explore why the Martin Erat Philip Forsberg trade gave one NHL franchise all the buyer's remorse. So let's begin by exploring the trade itself. On April 3rd, 2013, during the NHL trade deadline, the Washington Capitals, who at the time sat just two points out of a playoff spot at 10th place in the Eastern Conference, announced that they had acquired veteran forward Martin Erat and minor league forward Michael Lata from the Nashville Predators, who were also in the playoff race in the Western Conference at the time, in exchange for highly touted prospect Philip Forsberg. So Washington gave up one of the top players in their prospect pool in exchange for a productive veteran winger and a no-nonsense potential bottom six forward. In order to fully understand why this trade was made, and why it has given one team so much buyer's remorse, if it's not already obvious, let's start from the very beginning and take a look at each player's career up until the trade. We'll start with the smallest piece of this transaction, Michael Latta. The 72nd overall pick in the 2009 draft by Nashville, Latta had spent a few extra years in the juniors, with the OHL's Guelph Storm, before turning pro and joining the Predators' AHL affiliate, the Milwaukee Admirals, full-time in 2011. The Canadian forward had spent the last two years grinding away in the minors, scoring 62 points in 118 regular season games. However, his 284 penalty minutes in that same span showed that Lata had certainly carried over his reputation as more of a fighter than a lover. On to Nashville's other outgoing asset in this trade, and the centerpiece of this deal, Martin Erat. Selected 191st overall in the 1999 draft by Nashville, Erat had so far spent his entire 11-year NHL career with the Predators organization and had become quite an effective top six scorer, posting three 20-goal seasons and five 50-point seasons en route to scoring 163 goals and 318 assists for 481 points in 723 regular season games, sitting second in Nashville franchise history for goals and assists. However, several weeks before the trade deadline, Erat had approached Nashville general manager David Poyle and asked for a trade, telling him that he didn't feel the Predators could win the Stanley Cup with the team they had. Though Poyle would spend the next few weeks trying to talk him out of it, Erat was adamant that he wanted to be sent to a team that could legitimately contend for a championship. The problem was, Erat was in the midst of a seven-year, $31.5 million contract that carried a no-movement clause every year of the deal, meaning Erat couldn't just be traded anywhere. He would only waive his no-trade clause if he went to a team he was willing to play for, and he felt stood a strong chance of competing for a Stanley Cup championship. On the flip side of this transaction was, of course, Philip Forsberg. The 11th overall pick by Washington in the 2012 draft Forsberg had spent his 12-13 season before the trade overseas with Lexan's IF of the Swedish Allsvenskan, where he had continued to show growth and development in his game by scoring 15 goals and 18 assists for 33 points in 38 games, a vast improvement from his 17-point campaign in 43 games the year prior. So in this deal, Washington were giving up one of their top up-and-coming prospects, projected to be a mainstay in a team's top six for years to come, in order to acquire a veteran forward still capable of being a productive secondary scorer, as well as a hard-nosed fourth liner who could add grit and toughness to the roster. 
Though this trade raised plenty of eyebrows at the time, I can see why it was made considering what was going on behind the scenes. The Capitals had made it to the playoffs in each of the past five seasons, but hadn't been able to make it out of the second round, so were willing to sacrifice a long-term roster player of the future in return for a short-term gain of additional scoring and another veteran presence to help get them back into the postseason and make a real run at a championship. On the flip side, the Predators had made the postseason in seven of their last eight years, but had also been unable to make it out of the second round. With Erat demanding a trade after over a decade of service and consistent production for the franchise that drafted him, and with his contract the way it was structured, Nashville really had no choice but to grant his wish and send him packing. A move that was softened by the team receiving one of Washington's top prospects in return. Now we know why this transaction was made, let's take a look at what happened to these three players after the trade and see why one side was counting its lucky stars while the other wished they could get a refund. Following his acquisition by Washington, Michael Larter would spend the rest of the year with the Capitals AHL affiliate, the Hershey Bears, make a brief appearance on Washington's roster during the 13-14 season before earning a full-time spot the following year. The former third round pick would play two full seasons with the Capitals between 2014 and 2016, where he notched three goals, 13 points, and 118 penalty minutes in 96 games. Larter would then spend the next two years bouncing between a number of AHL teams before heading overseas in 2018, where he spent a year in the KHL with Kunlun Red Star, before joining Firestad BK of the Swedish Hockey League for the current 1920 season, where he scored five points in 26 games. About what you would expect from a projected fourth line enforcer in today's ever changing game. Unfortunately for Washington though, Martin Erat wouldn't do much better. Following the trade, Erat spent the rest of the year with the Capitals and scored three points in nine regular season games towards the end of the year. Though Washington would return to the playoffs, Erat's impact on their postseason run would be almost non-existent, as he went scoreless in four games, as the Capitals were knocked out in seven games in the first round, by the New York Rangers. If that late season performance wasn't bad enough, Erat's time in Washington was about to shift from disappointing to just downright awful. Erat rejoined the Capitals roster for the following 13-14 season, scored just a single goal and 24 points in 53 games, before requesting a trade again at the 2014 trade deadline. The forward's request was granted, and he was shipped off to the Phoenix Coyotes, along with John Mitchell, in exchange for Chris Brown, Rotislav Klesler, and a 2015 fourth-round pick, finishing his stint as a capital with just two goals and 27 points in 62 games. Erat then spent the next year and a half in Arizona, scoring 37 points in 96 games, before leaving the NHL in 2015 and heading overseas, in order to spend a year with avant-garde Omsk of the KHL, finishing his NHL career with 176 goals and 369 assists for 545 points in 881 games. Following a season in Russia, Erat returned to his home country of the Czech Republic and has spent the past four seasons playing for HC Kometa Brno of the Czech Extraliga, where the 38-year-old still plays to this day and has scored six points in 16 games during the current 1920 season. On the flip side, Philip Forsberg would make the move to North America and join the Predators roster towards the conclusion of the 12-13 season and spend the next two years earning a full-time spot in the bigs. Once he did though, the Swedish forward would hit the ground running. In his five full seasons since joining the National Hockey League, Philip Forsberg 
has scored at least 50 points every single year. He's also scored 30 goals in a season twice and has scored over 60 points in three different seasons, becoming a vital member of the Predators roster in the process. Forsberg has currently scored 45 points in 61 games during this current season, so I have no doubt that he will reach the 50 point mark once again and keep his streak going for a sixth straight year. At the time of this recording, Forsberg has scored 164 goals and 186 assists for 350 points in 456 games all with Nashville, has taken a trip to the Stanley Cup Finals in 2017, and has been one of the team's most consistent point producers since joining the roster. Not a bad return for a pair of guys who played less than three full seasons each on the opposing team's roster, eh folks? Want to know the worst bit about this deal for the Capitals though? With seven goals in 11 career games against Washington, Philip Forsberg has scored one more goal in his career just against his former organisation than both Martin Erat and Michael Larter scored combined as members of Washington's roster. In 175 total games between the two, Erat and Lata combined for just six total goals. Six. If that doesn't make the Capitals feel even worse than they already did about this deal, I don't know what will. So, to conclude, though it seemed a little strange at the time, the Martin Erat Philip Forsberg trade seemed to fulfill both teams' short term needs at the time the deal was made. The Washington Capitals received a veteran winger with a history of producing strong secondary numbers for his team who could help the Caps make a run at a championship, along with a fourth line enforcer who was purpose built for the playoffs, while the Nashville Predators removed a disgruntled player off their books, freed up some cap space and got younger by bringing in one of the top up and coming prospects in the league. What actually happened was Washington got two and a half years of an enforcer before sending him to the minors, less than two years and just two goals from their new veteran winger before sending him packing again the next deadline, while Nashville picked up a consistently productive member of their roster and one of the franchise's top players over the last half a decade. For the Predators, this move is one of, if not the best trade they have ever made. For the Capitals, it is literally the exact opposite. And that's why the Martin Erat Philip Forsberg trade gave the Washington Capitals all the buyer's remorse. What do you guys think about this trade? Also, is there another acquisition, free agency, or trade deadline you would like me to look at as part of this series? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. A big thank you to Chris Gadsby, Connor B, Paul Malia, Jordan Whitehead, and Martin Tolnus, as well as a huge thank you to Max Artis for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further, and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.